Use SST to create serverless REST APIs in Go. SST is an awesome framework for laying out your serverless architecture in AWS and locally debugging it. First off, some requirements. You're going to need Node 16 or later installed in your machine. I know this is a Go tutorial, but SST uses TypeScript to configure the AWS EDK that will provision our infrastructure in AWS. We'll also need Golang 1.16 or later and an AWS account with AWS CLI configured locally. Just in case you don't have an AWS CLI set up on your machine, you'll want to head over to the AWS console, create an account if you haven't got one, create an IAM user, give that user administrator access to the account. This is obviously not recommended for production. I've left a link in the description where you can find an extensive list of required policies. Then grab the access key ID and the secret access key. By going to create access key, choosing command line interface, confirming it, and you'll want to make sure you copy these down. Next, you want to install AWS CLI using sudo pip install AWS CLI, or if you're on Mac, you can use homebrew using brew install AWS CLI. Now in your terminal, run AWS configure and supply your secret key and access key ID you got in the previous step. Now we have AWS configured, open a new project in your favorite IDE and run the command mpx create SST at latest and give it the template of other slash go and a project name. Then cd into the directory and run npm install. You'll also want to run go mod init with your project name and then get the following packages. You'll probably want to pause here to copy these things down. The sst.config.ts file is where we can lay out the shape of our infrastructure. By default, the app will be deployed to the US East 1 AWS region, but you can change that here if you want to. Let's create a new API within our stack using the API construct object that SST provides. Within this, let's now provide three routes. One, get notes. The second, get notes with their path parameter of ID. And the third, a put of notes with path parameter ID as well. We can list the relative location of our Go files as the values of our route keys, or we can define them as functions and reference those functions as the value of the route keys. As this is a quick example, we're going to set up a simple function to return to us some data that we can use. However, in a real world scenario, you can imagine this would be hooked up to a database. We'll call this function notes. We'll put it in a separate folder and package in the project called DB. It'll return a map of map of strings. First off, let's create our first get route we defined earlier. Lambdas and SST take a request of events API gateway v2 HTTP request and return a response of events API gateway proxy response with an optional error. We then run the Lambda in the main function below. Now let's get our notes, serialize them, and then return them as a response. When implementing the function that gets the specific note, we have to get the path parameter ID from the route. Then we check to see if that note exists and return 404 not found if not. However, if it does, we serialize the note and set it back in the response. Handling our update route is very similar to our previous request. We get the path parameter, we check to see if it exists, and if it does, we replace the notes content property with the requests bodies content property. We then return the result as a response. That's our API complete. To run it locally, run npm run dev. This will give you an API endpoint, which was automatically requested in the stack outputs by the boilerplate code here. You can now head over to the SST console or your preferred REST client and try the API out. We can get our notes, we can get a specific note, and we can update a note by sending a body with the content parameter. One of the best things about SST is it's hot reloading. Let's head back to our initial get function and make a change to make our return JSON indented and more readable. Now we can save it, retry the call, and the changes are already there. All that's left to do is deploy your code using mpx SST deploy with a stage argument of prod. SST will then go and build your API in AWS. Once you're finished and want to clean everything up, you can run mpx SST remove for everything local and mpx SST remove with the argument stage as prod for the live service. As a bonus tip, one thing I wasn't too fond of was losing the regular standard library HTTP request and response types. This locks us out from utilizing a lot of third party packages. However, luckily, an adapter created by this absolute legend whose name I won't even attempt to pronounce allows us to wrap our lambdas exposing the standard library HTTP structures at the expense of a little functionality. And that's an introduction to Golang with SST. A large portion of this video is from a tutorial on the SST site. It's very well documented. I highly recommend reading it and I've linked to it below in the description. And with that, thanks for watching.